today we're learning how to create this retro 3D grid loop in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. We'll go with 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames with a composition duration of 4.2 seconds. We like an organized project file, so let's make sure to name this composition Retro Grid. And now that we've got the composition set up, create a new solid by right clicking in the work area, selecting new and then solid. We're going to make sure that this new solid is larger than our original composition size. Let's go with 4000 by 4000. And don't forget to name it, so let's go with Grid. Now in the effects and presets panel on the right hand side, we're going to search for the grid effect. You should be able to find this under the generate dropdown. Drag and drop the grid effect directly onto our white solid and it should generate a grid. It looks way too big, so what we'll do here is scale it down a little. In the effect control panel, we're going to change the size from value from corner point to width slider. This just gives us an easier way to control the size of our grid. We're going to scale this one to around 200. Now we have a 2D grid, but what we really want to do to achieve this effect is to add some more depth. We can do this by turning our grid into a 3D layer, which is as easy as clicking this little cube icon. If you can't see the icon, try toggling the modes using this button. Some new layer properties should show up in our transform options, allowing us to control our grid in 3D space. We'll change the second value in the X rotation property by clicking and dragging left or right, or clicking the value and entering a new number. Feel free to play around with this value, but if you're working along with me, let's go with negative 90 degrees. Next, we're going to reposition our grid and give a little bit more breathing room for the top. Hit P on your keyboard to show the position properties for our layer and bring it down a little by changing the second value or you can use the blue arrow on the 3D axis to move it higher or lower in 3D space. And while we're at it, let's change the border value to 10 and thicken up these lines. Time to get some animation going. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the timeline by using the shortcut home. Head up to the effect controls panel and activate keyframes by hitting the stopwatch icon next to the anchor property. We want this to loop, so we'll move our playhead to the end of the timeline using the shortcut end and change the anchor point properties here to make a keyframe. We'll increase the Y value, which is the second number, and you'll notice that it's starting to look like we're moving through the frame. Now we want this to loop perfectly, so there's a little bit of a trick we can do using our grid. We can use some of these lines as a reference point. We'll go to the start of the timeline and line up the bottom grid line so it lies just out of the frame. Now we go to the end and make sure that the bottom grid lines lie just inside the frame. Hit play and there we go, a perfect loop. And now that we've animated the grid, it's time to give it a bit of style. The first thing we'll do is get rid of this harsh drop off. In the effects and presets panel, search for gradient ramp. Drag and drop this onto our grid and it should add a nice gradient that makes it look like the grid continues on into the void. Next, we'll add an adjustment layer in the same way we added a solid. So right click, new, adjustment layer, and we'll just rename this to mirror. Back to our effects panel, we'll search for the mirror effect and drag it onto our new adjustment layer. It'll look like nothing changed at first, but if we head over to the effect controls and change the reflection angle to negative 90 degrees, we'll see that we've added a ceiling and it kind of makes it feel like we're in Tron. We'll add another adjustment layer and we'll use this to put all the effects that'll change the way our grid looks. So we'll rename this layer grid visuals. We're going to add the tint effect first and change it to a color we like by remapping white to that color. At this point, it's all about preference and the kind of look you're going for, so I'll leave that to you. Generally, I like to add a glow and a little bit of a blur, but what really sells this effect is adding in some film grain. I'm using a preset here, but you can find a bunch of free ones on YouTube by searching film grain. To import it, drag and drop your file into the project and make sure it's the topmost layer. Toggle this button so we can see the blend modes and change the textures mode to screen. This gets rid of the darker portions while still preserving the white dust specks. And there you have it, a retro grid that loops infinitely. If you want more tutorials for retro titles and effects, let me know in the comments, I've got a bunch of these. You know what to do to support the channel, and always remember, stay creative and go for broke.